Cathy. OK, what I want to do is um, show the construction of Art in a Box. Um, and we're going to start with the fairy. Now, I'm not going to do any colouring at all or, uh, in this, this hour's show because I think most people know how to colour and they've got, they've got their own preferences. So all I'm going to do is show construction of the boxes. So we're going to start with um, the Woodland Fairy. And I've pre-cut out, although I haven't cut out the centre there, so I just want to show how I do that. Yeah. But these are all the little parts that make up your little woodland fairy, which is, is here. Which so is you, like I say, you've got a visual reference as to what it's going to look like. Mm. So I'll just put these to one side. Um, and I use a scalpel to cut, or you could use a craft knife, or you could make a little slit with scissors and cut round with scissors. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I actually find it easier to use a scalpel. Um, and in the instructions, uh, we have said the best thing to do when cutting out is not to cut on the illustrated line, but just to the side, about a millimetre oh, or okay. so. And in the journal, although we wrote it, we didn't draw it because we just thought people would do it. And a lot of people, well, like myself included, don't always read instructions. <laughs> I'm guilty um, of that as well. Yeah, and they cut on the line. And if you cut on the line and you lose any part of it, you kind of lose part of the essence of the illustration. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on these ones, because obviously we did this post-journal, I've actually done a really... You pro I don't know if you could even see it. It's so fine. If we look here where my scalpel tip is there. We're just coming in now to have a little look. Right. There's a tiny, 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 line tiny fine... I don't think it's so far. Oh, you might be uh, able to, yeah. Um, you are better off cutting on that line... Got you. ..as opposed to... Because, actually, if you cut away part of this um, toadstool here, you need that yeah, line work do. to make the rest of it balanced. Yeah. So, um, as tempting as it is to actually cut on the line... So try and allow yourself to have the whole printed image left behind, exactly. obviously. Yeah, got you. Yeah. Got you. That's what I was trying to say, Scott. <laughs> well, you did. You did say that, absolutely. Yeah, you said it a bit, little bit more <laughs> concisely than I did. But, but even just looking now, even before, and I think this is testament to great artwork, isn't it, that even without an ounce of colour on those images, the, the images you have got, they look fab in black and white even. They the beautiful images themselves. They do. And, and I, I don't know actually if the sample is here. I did one to just test it all. And all I did was use um, a grey oh, just right. to sort of add shading around it. Yeah. Um, and it was really... In fact, it, might, it might be... Here. Yes, it's that one there. Is this right one here? You. Yeah. Oh, I, so this is the one with the under the sea. Yeah. So you just so you just supplied some of the greys with it. Yeah, it's just got grey. A little bit of um, I think it's alcohol marker I used, um, and it, I think it looks really it nice. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. Really nice. I love the whole idea of being three D, sort of looking actually into whatever image it is we've got, and I just think that yeah. is lovely to have that about it. That does look lovely in the silvers and greys, actually. Yeah, beautiful. Right, so the what, scales. We're, what we're going to do, Scott, is we're going to start with um, the actual back of the box. Okay. Um, I've Obviously pre-cut it, I've pre-scored it. All I use is a straight edge and like a tip of an embossing tool, but you can use um, anything you like. And then we're going to put our folds in. Now, my top, top tip, the best tool you can have is a bone folder. Right. You really, if you're putting a crease in, it needs to be a proper crease. So put all your scores and all your creases and all your folds in with your bone folder. At this stage, it doesn't matter which way round the fold goes, because oh, we'll, fi okay. we'll figure that out when we actually start adding the glue. Um, so. so don't skimp on the pressure here. Try no. and get your nice, neat, stronger yeah. score as you can. It just makes it really tight yeah. and really neat. And it, and it does take some pressure. Like you say, 300 GSM on there, you know, it's, it's perfect for construction ice, isn't it? But, it, yeah, it's, it's firm for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> I've put it on this craft card because I didn't think it showed up very well on my tiles. Oh, yeah, so that's a good idea. So hopefully this is a little bit, yeah. um, bit better. So what we're going to do is open it all back out again. Obviously, the side's going to come up. The tabs are going to go out the back because we don't want to see them from the inside of the no. box. So this is all going to come up. And these parts are actually going to be on the top because they are going to receive the frame eventually. So... Let's get some... Um, I did bring Bulldog Clip to But help. I'm liking already that, you know, the tags are there with where it says glue, nice and clear for everyone yeah, to see. Yeah, really you know. simple. Yeah. Now, I'm just using a solvent 
base glue because I want it to dry quickly, but you can use double-sided tape, anything that right. you, you have, PVA, whatever. Now, the um, key to making this right is to make sure that you've got right angles oh, okay, in yeah. the corners, okay? Now, I try to, at home, use like a clothes peg just to hold on. In this case, I'm just going to use a little bulldog clip but I could only find one little one, so I'm afraid I've got stonking great big ones. Not oh, that's ideal, all right. But it'll do. We are, yeah. It doesn't matter if A goes on B or B goes on A, just as long as it's square. Right. Keep our angles true. Yeah. And keep going back and checking your angles as well, because sometimes they can oh, slip a little you, bit. Yeah. When you pull one, the other one disappears exactly. a little bit out of it, yeah. So, yeah, we're all square, I think. So that'll dry pretty quickly. Now, like I say, we've got to pretend this is all beautifully coloured. Yes, all yeah. Right? Uh, now, the fairy, she's obviously going to sit in the box. It's easier to fill the inside of the box before we put the top on. All right, yep. Um, so we're going to put her in. Now, she's got a little tab. That folds under. Um, she's also got wings. Now, the wings are too wide for the box because we're going to just slightly fold them so they've got a bit of dimension. Ah, uh, yes. And stick that onto her back. And this would be lovely if, um, you know, they were all glittered up with some beautiful... Oh, definitely. ...pearl definitely. yeah, colouring and stuff like that. So that's her wings on. Um, In fact, yeah, the, the under the... Uh, under the sea... And our, f and our fairy there as well. Uh, they're, they're calling out for glitter, I think, or a bit of sparkle, oh, to be yeah, honest, definitely. a bit of reflection. Uh, if you are looking for the Under the Sea, by the way, details of that are on the bottom of your screen. At the side of your screen, uh, you've also got the uh, Woodland Fairy, which is what we're working on at the moment. Um, in here, we've got some blanks. Uh, blanks, bl blank ovals, blank rectangles, and you can either do some handwriting or if you've got some little sentiments, you could put those... In as well so right. I'm just going to have one on the inside just sh to show how to build up from inside yeah um, now the wings are probably dry so she is just going to sit um, inside the box now you can have her level but actually it gives her a little bit more dim dimension if you just sit her back a, a little bit oh okay yeah so that's what we're going to do just to keep the uh, 3d feel yeah I mean how simple is this no it's beautiful it's, it's lovely. so simple which is why, like you say, if you're working with this with children on it, you know, it's a real lovely project for them to be able to do. And still have the freedom of putting things where they want to put them. Yes. Or, like I say, if it's a very young child, you could, um, you, you could give them the colouring and you do the construction. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, of course. You know, like all the cutting and what have you. Yes. Right, so once you've constructed the inside of your box, yep. we're ready to pop this on the top. And the easiest way to do that is actually to turn it over and do it upside down. So we just put a bit of glue along the framed area and it fits exactly with a little tight, it's got about two mil or yeah, two mil all the way around the outside edge. So that if you've got slightly wobbly lines, it won't show. I suppose if you wanted to, you could actually put a little uh, a covering over the front of the box. So if you want to put some Sparkle may almost lead to a shaker card, almost kind of. If you want to put oh, some glitter oh, in there, couldn't you? Yeah, like some, some acetate front. or something. Yeah, some yeah. acetate with it, and then there's some yeah. glitter in there to have a little bit of fun with. So I'm just sealing the, the tabs off at the back as well while it's sticking to the front, just to seal those corners. And this is where you can also make your decision about how you're going to display it. So right, yes. it could be in your on your little stand. So you get the stand with it, yeah. yeah which sits in, um, sits in perfectly and you can sit it on a mantle. Or you get a hanger and each one's got a hanger. So all you would do is take away that little got you. Um, circle there with, um, you could use a circle punch or just a scalpel or something. You stick it to the stick back so on. you can hang it. You get a little tag, tag so you can put that on the back and write to whoever yeah. from me or handmade yeah. by or, yeah, or something. Yeah. So you've got that for the back. And then to finish her off, we have legs. So <laughs> her legs could be at an angle, they could just be hanging down. And again, we would make them dimensional. Um, not quite sure what I've done with my... Oh, there we are, use those. 
Is, yeah, is she going to go straight led or are you going to or are you going to go with a jaunty angle I option? I think they might go for a little bit of a jaunty angle. Jaunty angle, yeah. So, in Very principle, happy. that is basically. That's brilliant. Our Such fairy. a lovely project. Yeah, perfect. Isn't she lovely? Yeah, really lovely. And so again, don't forget, you know, there's no colour on that at all, and yet it's still a magical image to look at and to work on. Also, while I'm here, just want to show you this one of, of Gail's that she's painted. You don't have to have your wings on the inside. You can see she's actually got them popping out um, to the front, some at the back and some at the front. So how you position is entirely up to you, but I just right. thought that was worth showing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, so I've just quickly constructed the box because you've seen it with the first one and the principles are identical to the fairy. Great. Um, so I'm going to then put the um, mermaid... Um, in so she's got two tabs she has a tab at the bottom and a tab at the side so bone folder those in so they're nice and crisp and sharp um, and then we're going to glue there's a little bit of space at the top so she fits in really really well like that there's a couple of mil at the top so you're not gonna have trouble fitting her in like that and again we will just pretend that she's all beautifully painted and coloured yeah um, we're going to turn her over and going to glue around the frame we've got the the frame on she's looking very very pretty in her box yeah and with mine I well on the packaging particularly I had her tail sort of coming up and round the back of oh, her yes yeah um, but some of the DT have had her had it in different places so what I think we can do is actually trim this tab down if we want to reposition it somewhere else so if we have it like that uh, so she's sort of coming out from underneath yeah I quite like that yeah I did so um, and 3d um, gel glues are brilliant for oh, this right. project Bit you know if you're wanting to get some some lift on your elements mm. so that's her tail and then same thing again we've got um, we've got the um, stand the hanger the information if you want to put anything on the back then we've got loads of fish and shells um, Lovely. Which are just beautiful. And, again, and like you say, I'm sure other people may have some other elements that think, oh, do you know what, that would work perfect with this, you know, maybe again with the theme of shells or yes. uh, whatever we've got, but lovely. And I think, you know, if it's, um, um, if it's going to be a personalised gift and you've got a spe specific um, sentiment, yeah. stamping it on the Bockingford that comes with this pack, That's you've nice. got the extra yeah, two course. sheets. And if you're not going to use it, save those two sheets and use them for painting because yeah. I think once you try them, you um, don't ever go back to anything else. They're just so fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So no, I love them. So, like I say, there's loads of elements. And if you don't use all these elements, you could use them on, on different projects oh, and you just build and build and build up. What a lovely, so lovely project. That's the Little Mermaid. Obviously, I haven't glued it, no. but I think you get the, the idea. So, at the back of our bird box, we've got a little nesting box, which is dimensional, and this has to go in before you pretty well do anything else because it's... Yeah. It's a little bit fiddly and you need to be able to have access to the back right. easily. So I've just folded over the sides. It says glue, tells you where to do it. Perfect, and that's my kind of instruction. You'll see there's a tiny little knot mm. here and that's to really indicate the top um, because this isn't um, dead on square so you want to make sure you get it the right way round. And you place that so it looks like your nesting box is hanging. Um, and we'll just that down there and there it's actually a nesting box make sure it's straight um, and then I'm actually going to put this on straight away because I think we're running out of time so attach the box to its frame make sure the right way up yep again it fits exactly so there shouldn't be any overlap and then We've got birds without wings, but we've got extra birds. And this actually is where your um, 3D gel really 
takes effect because you can make his body curved like this. I don't know if you can see this on, on the overhead. <laughs>